next on The Professional Rule Breaker. Hi, I'm Tim Urich from Tier One Capital, and I love listening to The Professional Rule Breaker because I always learn things that you don't hear on the street. So welcome back to the Professional Rule Breaker Show. I am your host, Kathy Walterhouse. So here at the Professional Rule Breaker, we are here to help you succeed. So if you're struggling in sales, check us out at theprofessionalrulebreaker.com. And today I have a very special guest that I think is going to be really helpful to everyone that is listening. I want to ask you a question. If you're in business, do you need to find some money? Well, my next guest has been helping small business owners find money that they're giving away unknowingly and unnecessarily so that they can fund their exit from the business without having to reduce expenses or create additional revenue to do so. So my next guest is my friend, Tim Urich. And he's, by the way, is the founder and CEO of Tier One Capital. So welcome. Kathy, it's so good to be here. Thank you. I am happy to have you because I love it. When I saw something about finding money, <laughs> and for all business owners out there, there's always, you can have cash flow issues, or maybe you may not have a great accounting of what's happening in your business, or there's some months that you just need to find some money. Tell me more about that, because I love that. I think that should, you should have a logo that just says finding money or something like that. <laughs> well, we would, we probably would, except for there's a thing in our industry called compliance. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, hey, there's one in mine too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we found is just give you a little background. I've been in financial services since 1985. And when I started working with small business owners, and I really love working with small business owners because I think small businesses are the backbone of the U.S. economy. Yes. And so I've done a, I've done a lot of research and found this, that 44% of our overall GDP is generated by companies that are categorized as small businesses. That's a huge percentage. Yeah. Like 50 really percent. Exactly. And 50 percent of all jobs are small business jobs. 90 percent of all companies in America are categorized as small businesses. So small wow. businesses really are the heart and soul of America. And the way I look at it, is there literally is nothing more quintessentially American than the small business owner. You know, you have a great idea and then hopefully you bring it to the world and the world beats a path to your door. Well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but the small business owner is out there fighting, slugging it out every single day. So as working with small business owners in the financial services industry, we're really good at talking to a business owner and pointing out their problems. They have key people they want to retain. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do that? They have a business succession plan. Maybe it's, you know, two partners started a pizza shop or a restaurant, and now they need succession plan. What happens if one dies or gets disabled or one decides to leave? And then there's just the regular exit plan, right? You, a lot of times business owners start a job or start a business and it's almost like they started it for a job and then all of a sudden they just kept rolling all of their profits back into the business 90 percent of a business owner's wealth is locked up in their business so how do you monetize that for exit planning purposes so our industry is great at pointing out the problem we're great at offering a solution and telling you how much it's going to cost to solve that problem, but our industry comes up woefully short in helping or showing a business owner how exactly they can afford to do all of this planning. And think about it. Most business owners are so wrapped up in their business, the last thing they want to do 
is take money away or cash flow away from the business and use it to fund their own retirement or their succession. So I had a long history of working with business owners, pointing out the problem, offering the solution. And then they're like, hey, Tim, this would be great. But if I had an extra $10,000 a year, you know darn well, I'd be pouring it back into my business. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of the mentality that's out there though, isn't it? It's the, if you pour the money back into your business, you can help accelerate the growth, I think is what the mindset is. But then I've also heard pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. So what's well, better? What if you could do both at the same time? Hey there, you know I'm all about making a big difference, making this really big impact. So I am so thrilled to introduce to you today's podcast sponsor. They are the very last U.S. family-owned manufacturer of consumer goods products, products that you use every single day and you run out of them every single day. And on top of that, their products are healthier and safer for you. And they have been made here in the great USA. My family made the switch and I am so happy that we did. And so is everyone else in the family because the products are amazing. So while these big giant corporations are just getting bigger and so many small businesses are really struggling to survive, why not help me in rooting for the underdog? And you know, I'm all about the underdog instead of these giant 11 conglomerates that control 97% of the North American consumer goods market. So if you're ready to make a difference and switch away to something bigger and better, go to switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker, drop your information and one of my friends will reach out to you directly and let's all switch away together to better quality products that are healthier and safer for you and support family owned businesses because together we can rewrite the business landscape and make a difference one person at a time. That would be really fantastic. I think for everybody. That's, that, that's exactly what we show our clients how to do. So keep this in mind. Every move you make as a small business owner from a financial perspective, you think is moving you forward. What if what you thought to be true about the financial strategies you're implementing turned out not to be true? When would you want to know? Like yesterday. <laughs> exactly. So what we do is we show people exactly where they're giving up control of their money. Now, you talk about a professional rule. What I do is in such stark contrast to what the industry does, it's crazy. So think of this. When you speak with a financial advisor or a business planning specialist, what have you, basically they're talking to you about, show me everything you got. And then some or all of what you have is bad. And we could show you how to get a higher rate of return, or we can show you how to make it better. Well, that may or may not be true. In other words, you might make a change, but there's no guarantee you'll get the return that they're telling you they can. Right. Contrasting that with what we do, I could show you, if you and I work together, Kathy, I could show you with 100% certainty exactly where you're giving up control of your money. And you will agree 100% of the time. Because I'm not just saying, hey, Kathy, you're giving up control of your money here and here. It's, Kathy, here's where you're giving up control in this area. And these are the four or five reasons why. Okay. And logically and economically, that'll make sense. However, it's very difficult for the people we deal with to make the change because everybody's doing it the way they're doing it. Everybody, it's conventional wisdom. Right. Now, conventional wisdom, I would argue, has never been right about anything. But that's a conversation. <laughs> that must be what makes another. you a rule breaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm not so concerned about being right or wrong. I'm concerned about getting results for our, our clients. And here's where I knew that we were onto something. About four years ago, we 
commissioned a research project. And we hired a company to do research and to talk about the three disturbing trends that were affecting small business owners. And the number one trend was that small business owners were giving away control of their cash flow. Now, what do you mean exactly by that? So, because I want to drill down into that a bit. Can you explain yeah. that to me and the audience as well? So, according to Intuit, mm -hmm. they found that 61% of small business owners struggle with chronic or cyclical cash flow issues. And I would venture to say that the majority of the listeners today have experienced, at the very least, cyclical cash flow issues. Some are experiencing chronic issues. Now, having worked with small business owners for the past 39 years, here's what I have found. And I didn't realize this early on, but as I matured in my business and started dealing with business owners more and more, 100% of the cash flow issues that we're experiencing are, wait for this, self-inflicted. Really? Self-inflicted. Now, I am really curious about that. So what do you mean by that? I know what self-inflicted means, but tell me more. It doesn't emanate from lack of revenue. It doesn't emanate from too many expenses. It emanates from how we're actually using our cash flow. Think about as a business owner, how gosh down darn hard it is to generate a profit. So now you got a dollar's worth of profit and you control that. And then the next move you make is to completely give away control of that profit. And we call that the financial golf swing because it's not where your money is. It's how you're using your money that is literally holding you back. So I can give you a really good example. I was going to ask you, yeah, give, give us an example of this. When I sit down with a business owner and or their CPA and or their CFO, the CPA and the CFO in particular will take exception to my statement that they're giving away control of their money unknowingly and unnecessarily. They, mm -hmm. They're like, no, we're not. That's other people. We don't do that. We're very frugal. We're very judicious. Yeah, not so much. So let me give you this example. In 2019, I was referred to a gentleman who was in really good shape financially. He owned a business. He had four locations to that business. At the time, he was in his early 40s. He was making $650,000 a year. He owned the real estate on all four locations of his business. He had over a million dollars in his retirement account. For all intents and purposes, this guy was doing very well. So when I called him, he reluctantly gave me the appointment. And the reason he did was because the gentleman who had referred me was a longtime childhood friend of his. So he said, hey, you know, Jeff is a really good friend of mine. If he thinks that I should speak with you, come on over. But I got to tell you, I have two financial advisors and I meet with my CPA every month. If there was anything I needed to know, these folks would have told me about it. And my response was, hey, listen, Nobody has the market cornered on good ideas. Maybe I could give you a good idea. And if not, I'm a good friend of Jeff's. You're a good friend of Jeff's. Maybe both of us will make a new friend. That's the worst thing that's going to come from this. So he agrees to meet with me. And I'm going through asking him questions, explaining what we do. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I got that squared away. Finally, I talked to him about he had uh, two business loans. And he also had an open credit line that he had been utilizing. And I said, were those loans created to buy equipment and inventory for a location of your business? And he said, no, I pay my quarterly taxes by using draws on my credit line. And then, you know, since I've seen this before, it immediately came to me. So I said, is this the way it goes? You take a draw on your credit line. But my next question was, how much are your quarterly taxes? He said 50 grand a quarter. I said, okay, so you might have 20,000 of cash laying around. You take 30,000 draw on the credit line and you pay back maybe 10 or 15 on the credit line draw. And the next thing you know, it's the next quarter. You have some cash saved. You take a bigger draw. 
and then you max out the line. Sounds the like a vicious cycle. Out, yeah. Yeah. The bank terms out that loan, makes it a five-year or seven-year loan, and then they open another credit line. He said, that's basically the way I do it. And I said, both of those loans are credit line draws for taxes. He said, yep. And I said, now you also have an open line taxes. He said, I said, okay. So my next question was when you were in college, how much income were you hoping to make? And he said, you know, about 150, 200. I said, so that was going to be the be all and end all. He said, yeah. And I burst out laughing and he said, what, what's so darn funny. And I said, isn't it ironic that you're making three to four times what you ever dreamed you could make and you can't pay your darn tax without taking a draw on your credit line. He said, well, that's just the way I do it. I said, does that make it right? Mm -hmm. So I said, here's the deal. If I could show you a way, not initially, but eventually you would never ever have to take a draw on your credit line ever again to pay your taxes. Would that conversation be worth 45 minutes of your time? He said, absolutely. So we agreed to meet. This was the summer of 2019. We put a plan together for him in, the, in October of 2019. Now, our first step was to point out where he was giving up control. And by the way, he didn't argue with that. He agreed. And then the question was, was he going to stop doing those things? Well, most of them he did, but there were one or two that he kept, you know, that he couldn't, he was emotionally attached to, let's say. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's never and, good. And that's fine, right? <laughs> it's his money, he can use it in any way, shape, or form. But at least now he knows. So July 8th of 2020, I got a text from him and he said, Tim, I just want you to know I left Brian's office. Brian is a CPA. I want you to know that we filed our 2019 taxes on extension and I had enough money available to pay my 2019 tax obligation. But better yet, I also have money set aside for our September quarterly, our January quarterly, and what we estimate we're going to need to pay in April for our 2020 tax obligation. Thanks for all you do for me and my family. Now, Kathy, I would ask you, if the story ends right there, that's a pretty good ending, isn't it? That's a pretty good ending. I wanted to actually know more about it though, because I'm like, what did you tell him to do? <laughs> I, I, I'll get there, but I want to get to the rest of the story. So in December of 2022, he has now expanded his business to seven locations. Each one of them, by the way, requires capital to open, to start. He also bought a $1.5 million beach house. And again, that takes capital. So in December of 2022, seven o'clock in the morning, me, him, and his CPA are meeting in my conference room. And between the money he had set up with the accounts we set up for him, and the he also had a separate checking account for all seven of his locations. He now is in control of $1.8 million of cash. That's awesome. And here's the deal. I'm no genius. This guy always had the potential to have that kind of money laying around. He was just thinking about it in a way that was detrimental to him being in control of his cash. So to answer your question, what did we do? Because I was going to say, of, what would be like some easy steps that mm -hmm. the listeners could implement or start looking at, or maybe even changing their mindset about? Yeah. So one of the things is that we have an aversion to debt. And so we hate paying interest. And that's fine. I get it. But understand, if you take your profits that you work so hard to earn, and you take those profits and you put it on debt. Think about what you just did. Mm -hmm. You earn the profit, you control that dollar of profit, and then you give it away to the bank. So you no longer control it. Now, right. if you want to get that profit, if you want to get it back for something else down the road, you got to go to the bank and ask permission to get your money. That's not a good thing. And it's not a good position to be in. So that was one quick thing that we fixed. The other thing was he was in a race again to get out of debt. But the irony is he had more debt today or at, at that time than he did 
when he first started business. You know, I remember I was talking to a uh, doctor. He was a nephrologist, a kidney doctor. This is about 20 years ago. And he said he and his wife just built the, this, you know, the, a McMansion. It was $1.2 million. He had some money. So he had an $800,000 mortgage. And he said, you know, I just signed the paperwork on this $800,000 mortgage. And he said, I was laughing. My wife and I were laughing on the way home from the bank because when we first started out, I borrowed $90,000 to buy our first house. And my wife and I were scared straight mm -hmm. because we were in all this debt. And now I'm signing away $800,000 of my future income, and I think nothing of it. And so the point is, most people are in a race to get out of debt, only to get back into debt. So here's the question. Are you making any progress? And that's where we could help open people's eyes to the fact that it's not about interest rate. It's not about rate of return. Everything is about being in control of your money. And when you view things through that lens, all of your decisions become much easier and they're made with greater clarity. And that's the switch that we flipped for this particular guy. Because again, Kathy, he always had the ability to be in control of that amount of money. He just was thinking about it differently. And there's an old saying, when you have access to capital, opportunities will find you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I could attest to that both personally, but in this gentleman, it's amazing. He was always looking for like these great deals and they may or may not have come his way. The problem was they were coming his way. He just didn't recognize them. Mm -hmm. Now, when he had capital, the great thing about having capital is the deals you say no to. And that was the biggest thing that, that came from it for mm -hmm. him. He said, Tim, there are deals that I would have jumped at that I come across my desk every day. And he said, I couldn't be bothered. I'm looking for those perfect deals. And that, and he's literally finding them. I would say it's a change in the mindset. It's being able to be open to thinking differently. And you're right. I think, I know for me personally, I don't like debt. I really don't. And Interest rates are very high right now, but I love how you hit upon when you have capital, deals will come your way. And you see that with people that are phenomenally successful, is they're leveraging their capital in some shape or form. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned something, and this is part of the education that we provide. A lot of people hate debt. I saw the face you gave me when, when I said that. <laughs> but part of our fear of debt is our lack of understanding the difference between debt and finance. Now, let me just give you a basic rudimentary definition. If I borrow $100,000 and I don't have $100,000, then I'm in debt. However, if I have $100,000, and I borrow $100,000, I'm not a debtor. I'm choosing to use other people's money mm -hmm. to make my money more efficient. That is a huge distinction. This is finance 101. This is not rocket science. This is incredibly simple, but we've abdicated our understanding of all things financial. And the days of us meeting with a financial advisor and giving him all of, or her all of our stuff and then walking out and saying and feeling good like oh we did financial planning today no you didn't here's the irony you walked in and you said oh this person is the solution to my problem you lost control of your money right then and there exactly but worse what you don't realize is before you walked in that person was sitting there saying hey Kathy is the solution to my problem. Mm -hmm. I hope she has money because I got two kids in private school and I've got a Lexus payment and I've got, I've got, I've got. So the, the bottom line is you think they're the solution to your problem, but the reality is you're the solution to their problem. Yep. And these are the things that we are, you know, unabashedly point out to folks 
Some don't like to hear it, and I'm okay with it. The truth hurts. But at the end of the day, I'm not looking for to be somebody's friend. I'm looking to have impact to make their lives better, to yep. make their business better, et cetera. Well, sometimes you have to say the tough things to help guide people forward rather than just kind of continuing to do what it is that they're doing that's not working. And that, and it sounds like that's absolutely what it is that you do. I love, I'm a little bit of a control freak. So I love that you said you pose it. Are you in control of your money? I mean, that is such a great statement and it's got my wheels turning. It's a really thought provoking, different way of looking at managing your money your revenues, everything that, that if you're a business person, everything that's surrounding uh, your business as well. I'm glad that you're here and you're able to offer that information and get people open to thinking a little bit different. Are you in control of your money? So Tim, where can people find you? Yeah, so we, our website is www.tier1 capital. That's T I E R, the digit one, C A P I T A is an alpha, L.com. And actually, you can go to free resources and there's a free business owner's guide. Okay. That That's we great. will provide for, for your audience. And it's the six things you need to consider when looking for help with business succession and business owner retirement planning. And I got to tell you, those six questions or things that consider will pretty much guide you as to what you really should be looking for. Because what we found is most people are asking the wrong questions only because they don't know. I love that. I'm <laughs> Something you don't know about me, but I'm all about asking questions. I think if you can ask the right questions, I think it makes such a difference in your business and in your life as well too. Sometimes it's funny, we'll go out somewhere and my husband's like, don't ask any questions. And I'm like, no, that's not who I am. <laughs> I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask some questions <laughs> if I feel I need to. Yeah, because I think when you ask the questions, that's where you can get information and also maybe open your mind to new ways of thinking or new things that are out there. And so we kind of related a little bit about that you're a rule breaker. But was there a moment in your life you went, oh my gosh, I'm so different than the status quo or what I do is so different from the status quo? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Let me just explain this. I'm big on research and data. So according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, there's over 272,000 financial advisors. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I would venture to say that less than a thousand are proficient at showing you how to make your money more efficient. That means the majority of everybody else is playing the same game. They're playing checkers. We're playing chess. And the key is, especially in today's times, people need to be in greater control of their money and their cash flow. Because we have a saying, whoever controls your cash flow controls your life. Ooh, I like that. And the bottom Ever line controls is your cash flow controls your life. Yeah, that's like a mic drop right there. I'm actually so, writing it down so I don't forget it. <laughs> so when we're teaching our process, it's literally four steps and it's four easy steps. Number one, we do all the heavy lifting because we're going to point out to you exactly where you're giving up control of your money. Now, You'll have to help us get that information. But here's the analogy we make. I, I mentioned earlier, I believe, Kathy, we call this the financial golf swing because here's the way the industry has trained us to deal with them. And it goes something like this. And if this sounds familiar, Kathy, raise your hand or point it out. So it's basically show us all your stuff. Everything you have stinks. My stuff is the best. Let me sell you some of my mm -hmm. stuff. Now, here's the golf analogy. Show us your golf clubs stink. Come mm -hmm. to my pro shop. I'll sell you a new set of golf clubs. That's the industry's pitch. That's literally the way they do it. Now, 
here's our pitch. Kathy, I don't know if I could help you, but the best way for me to find out is to see how you're using your money. So let's go down to the practice range. Let me see you hit a couple practice balls. And then we might have to make some tweaks to your swing. And then you might need a particular club that you don't have. But I can't make that recommendation unless I see how you're using your money. And that's our basic pitch. Yeah. You either want it or you don't. And I could tell you, we have yet to find anybody who is doing it 100% correct across the board. Yep. There's always some leaks in the bucket, so to speak. But the bottom line is, that's where we're the rule breaker. Because we're not following the party line. We're showing people how to be in control. That ain't what the industry's after. Right. The industry wants to be in control. Because they want the money. They want the commissions. They want that type of thing. And exactly. So it's It reminds me a lot of sales. I love that you said that was your pitch. A lot of people go in. And they think they know what the problem is and they just spew out just a bunch of information. But they don't take the time to really find out what the real need is and the real want is and the real problem is. And when you get to that, that's when you can make the tweaks, right? Same thing, you know, exactly. you, you see the problem in the swing. And you're like, okay, these are the few little things that we can tweak so that you're going to have this amazing swing in your case, in my case, grow your sales and grow your business as well. So very, very similar, but we're going to make sure that we have your information in the show notes so that people can go and get your free resource and check you out as well. I love how some of the things that you said were really like big mindset shifts. First off, are you in control of your money? Everybody thinks, I think, that they're in control of their money, but it sounds like we're really not in control with your money. And um, whomever controls your cash flow controls your life. And so for everybody's out there, because I know you guys are all a bunch of rule breakers out there, most rule breakers don't like to be controlled. So. I hope you take what you have learned today from Tim Urich and then also check out his website and uh, go get his free resource and uh, take a look at that because I know everyone out there, you all have a very special gift. You work really hard to put it out there. You want to make an impact in other people's lives. And then of course, um, make a little bit of money or a lot of money. And so don't give up your control. Continue being a rule breaker like Tim and have a little bit of an open mind when it comes to your money. And again, please check out Tim's resources and links that we're going to have it in our show show notes. So I want to thank you, Tim, because I would say you had a couple of mic drop moments there. There's a couple of little things. I think one of your quotes, I'm actually going to put it up on my wall in my office as a reminder every single day whomever controls your cash flow controls your life that's the one you will see in my office in the future so i want to thank you tim for being our guest today on the professional rule breaker show it was certainly my pleasure and i can't believe how quickly the time has gone by yeah, it went by fast we'll have to have you back <laughs> Is what I would we'll, love that. what we'll do yes absolutely so again everybody check out the show notes and please, if you haven't already given us a five-star review, wherever you listen to us, please do so because it helps the algorithm find us more and help more people. So again, thank you everyone. And uh, keep on being fierce out there. And of course, be a rule breaker. <laughs>